Today's event is the first formal in-person kickoff since the DPLA has become live. I think what today is all about is giving us a chance to reconnect with the DPLA community. It's a very exciting moment in the history of this startup and it's got lots of positive energy and lots of things we still have to accomplish. We had thousands of people during the planning phase that were so important to creating what DPLA is today and this gives us a chance to get back in touch with them. I think DPLA is important for American democracy in very simple terms, the creation of a national digital library system created by the private sector and public sector coming together will strengthen local communities and it will strengthen the way in which we participate in our democracy. Well, I think the, the key to DPLA success isn't the technology, it's the social aspect to it. It's really a collaborative project and we've been so lucky to have so many partners. Over, uh, I think we are at 18 hubs, which are big uh, aggregators of content, and over a thousand different institutions that have been a part of this, contributing materials together, and so many other people who've contributed ideas, time, energy to the effort. The title of the session was Using the DPL for Advanced Research, and we had, I thought, a really productive discussion about um, focusing a lot on how you can link the data and use the data connect the data to, um, and the DPL to other available projects. Um, I thought it was very uh, productive and interesting. I'm doing a think tank with two other co-leaders on the future of libraries. And it's a think tank, so it's very participatory. The variety and diversity of the stuff that's in the DPLA is amazing. You can use it to expand the scope of the class and the research that I'm doing. I'm used to usually using research libraries that have a very specific focus and the DPLA has a much more diverse body of materials. What we've asked the groups, we've divided them into uh, about six small groups to discuss the different issues. We gave them scenarios of possibilities for libraries in the future and they've been charged to discuss the top issues and to come away with both a summary of their discussions as well as two um, lists two items for a list. One, uh, to be able to say what can be implemented immediately and what is a more futuristic um, implementation of a technology. I guess my specific session, the only thing I'd have to say is what was really great for me is I'm not naturally a digital humanities person. This is where I'm coming from this new, from a more traditional research perspective and I thought it was a very welcoming and open discussion that allowed me entry in a way that I haven't seen in a lot of academic conferences. So I was really impressed. It's just been an incredible day. We had 700 people sign up to come and you can just feel the energy. When I got up on stage this morning, first thing, uh, there was just a lot of smiles in the crowd, a lot of people who know each other, old friends and some new friends who have worked on the project. So I think it's uh, wonderful to get together and have a chance to do this in person. Well, I hope that people from many different walks of life, whether representing a particular community group from a particular uh, uh, racial background or someone who is representing uh, funders or people who are representing large institutions, I hope that they will all see a place for themselves within the DPLA. This is a community-driven organization and one where we want lots of participation from smart and devoted people who want to volunteer their time and their treasure, in the case of philanthropists, uh, to make something that's truly in the public interest. If someone hasn't had a chance to say hi, happy to do so. Pick up stuff on your way out and thanks again.